Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. Welcome to the show. It is Wrestling Uncensored. I'm Dave Simon. He's Johnny North. WrestlingUncensored.net is the website. Go check us out. Watch us on YouTube. Subscribe to the channel. Like the video. Subscribe. Leave a comment. And click the bell so you get the notifications every time that we're on. If you are listening to us on the radio, if you're listening to us via podcast, you can watch this show over at WrestlingUncensored.net on the YouTube channel as well, RingsideReport.net, the online home of the Ringside Report Network. We've got Ringside Report, the MMA show. We've got What's Phantom in Japan. We've got Dave and Johnny Live that goes down on the YouTube channel every Friday afternoon at about 1230 And, of course, you've got Wrestling Uncensored. So a whole list of shows for you to watch. If you missed our All Out special, we did a watch-along for All Out on the YouTube channel. Johnny was here. The Green Phantom was here, which really an all-star lineup of professional wrestlers. This was the first, the first time ever that we went live on YouTube. Uh, The three of us, myself, Johnny North, and the Green Phantom, two of... Canada's best pro wrestlers and me, the guy, the other guy, uh, doing uh, the whole AEW watch along thing, and it was a good time. It was a lot of fun. It was the first time I ever did something like that. Hopefully, we'll do more like that in the future. But it was fun with you, Phantom, and uh, his girlfriend Paige as well. It was fun. <laughs> what? Well, didn't Paige like show up every now and then, like to talk to you? Well, you know, her name's not Paige. You know that's not Paige, right? Yeah, but I'm taking liberties, so it's fine. You're I taking can... liberties. You're <laughs> calling her Paige. All right, if you want to. Uh, yeah, but we had a good time, and you can watch that show right now on our YouTube channel. We watched All Out. We saw Chris Jericho become the new AEW champion, the first ever AEW champion, the youngest champion in the company's history. And he also lost the championship very quickly. Uh, yeah, he lost it, not to a wrestler, but, you know, just lost the title. But he regained it, and if you want to hear us talk about AEW, we will talk about the Jericho belt saga on Dave and Johnny Live, so you can always check out Dave and Johnny Live on the YouTube channel as well, where we talk about AEW and all things that are not WWE, but on this show, we talk about the WWE, and they give us plenty to talk about, so much content, so many big events, and some big stories this week, and some big matches and big appearances coming up next week Uh, wwe going to new york city at madison square garden stone cold steve austin set to appear on monday night raw and smackdown also at msg will feature the undertaker so two big stars from the attitude era returning on monday and tuesday night at madison square garden they don't often do TV there. We're going to talk about Bailey turning heel. That was the big story, I think, of the week. Twitter was going crazy. Could not believe that Bailey joined up with Sasha to beat up on Becky Lynch this week on Raw. And then they beat up on Charlotte Flair on SmackDown. We will get to that. We'll get to the King of the Ring. A triple threat coming up in the King of the Ring a uh, weird finish on Raw this week between Samoa Joe and Ricochet. A couple surprises over on the SmackDown side of the King of the Ring. Rowan turning on Daniel Bryan. What's going on there with the Rowan, Roman Reigns, Daniel Bryan saga? We know that Clash of Champions, the next pay-per-view from the WWE coming up next weekend. That'll be September the 15th in Charlotte, North Carolina next Sunday and Roman Reigns will be taking on Rowan. I I thought they were calling him Eric Rowan, but I guess it's just back to Rowan now. I thought it said uh, Eric Rowan on the graphic. So he's Eric Rowan again. He lost his first name, but he has regained it, and he's regained his independence free from Daniel Bryan. So he not only gets to be his own man, no longer Daniel Bryan's lackey, but he also... Gets his first name back. Good for you, Eric Rowan. For now, I think this story is far from over after Clash of Champions. I think this is just going to continue to evolve. And I could easily see Rowan or Eric Rowan or whatever you want to call him 
I think he's going to rejoin Daniel Bryan in the end. I don't think Daniel Bryan turned face on SmackDown. I think they gave him the name Eric back because it was too confusing to say Rowan and Roman. When Rowan and Roman are feuding, it's like, who's who? Because it's basically the same name. I oh. mean, it's one letter, you know. You flip the W, and you've got Roman. Ooh. Also, just Rowan, it, it doesn't really catch your catch your ears really too much in terms of like a yeah, star. Rowan. Like, Eric Rowan isn't a great name either. Didn't they name one of the Viking Raiders Eric? They did, yeah. A lot of Eric's in the WWE these days. Well, they had a lot of uh, Williams for a while, didn't they? I don't know. Did they? No, they had a lot of Steves, right? So, like, William Regal couldn't be called Steven Regal? Yeah, it'd be called Well, I William. think that was just because of Steve Austin. At one point, they had a ton of Johns. They yep. had, like, John Morrison, John Cena, John Bradshaw Layfield. Like, yep. they had a bunch of guys named John. It was like WWJ, that, World Wrestling John. That, they had Stevie Richards. There was quite a few Steves. Yeah, there's been a lot of Steves. Uh, I don't know why we're talking about the names here, but uh, the most important thing is that SmackDown ended this week with Rowan not only attacking Roman Reigns, but uh, attacking Daniel Bryan as well, which surprised me. Daniel Bryan and Roman Reigns are supposed to have this confrontation, this face-to-face -face on SmackDown. Daniel Bryan comes out and he says, look, I've got nothing to do with Rowan attacking Roman Reigns. I didn't know he was going to do this, and you could not like my views on the environment or whatever, but there's one thing you can't do, and that's call me a liar. Daniel Bryan is not a liar. And that's true. Daniel Bryan is not a liar. I agree with that. For now. He always tells the truth, all right? Even when he lies. <laughs> of course. Uh, Daniel Bryan then demands an apology from Roman Reigns for attacking him last week for no reason, you know, which legitimate. And then Roman Reigns shows up on the stage, and he's immediately attacked by Eric Rowan. Brian's like, what are you doing? Why are you doing this? Eric Rowan pushes Daniel Bryan away. So you're like, whoa, what's going on here? And then Rowan continues to beat up on Roman Reigns, and then he challenges Daniel Bryan to step in the ring and slap him in the face again like he did last week. And Daniel Bryan's like, what's going on, man? I thought we were friends. What's happening here? And uh, Rowan continues to attack Roman then. Hits him with the steel steps. Looks like he's about to put him through the announce table. Daniel Bryan then steps in. Slaps Rowan. Rowan then grabs Daniel Bryan by the face. And does his iron claw choke slam face choke slam finisher move through the announce table. And it is devastating. And that's how SmackDown ends. Rowan turns on Daniel Bryan. And now Rowan has a match next week at Clash of Champions against Roman Reigns. You know, they started this thing out, and I didn't like it. Roman's getting attacked. Who's attacking Roman? It's kind of like, yeah, this is stupid. This is kind of silly. But at this point in the storyline, they've got my interest. What's happening with Daniel Bryan? There's movement with the Daniel Bryan story. Something is going on with Daniel Bryan's character, and that's enough to get me interested. Daniel Bryan is in the main event. He's feuding with Roman Reigns, but he's not. He's feuding with Rowan, or is he? It's interesting. It's different. And it's got me wondering, what are they going to do with Daniel Bryan? I'm more interested in that because I like Daniel Bryan. I think he's a great wrestler. But I'm also interested to see where they're going with Rowan and Roman Reigns. But uh, this Daniel Bryan thing, it's weird because, you know, he was a heel, been a heel for a while. And now Rowan turns on him. Is he still a heel? What is Daniel Bryan at this point? And was the turn from Rowan legitimate? Was this just a an elaborate ruse to trick Roman Reigns so that when Daniel Bryan does help Rowan beat up Roman at Clash of Champions, we're all confused? Like, was this just to solidify the rift between Daniel Bryan and Eric Rowan to trick Roman Reigns into thinking they're not still friends 
even though they are, and this is a diabolical plan from Daniel Bryan. Is this a diabolical plan from Daniel Bryan, or did Rowan really just turn his back on Bryan, and Bryan and Rowan are no longer a thing? What is happening here? And how does Roman Reigns fit into it? You know, obviously we expect him to to beat Rowan if it's just a one-on-one thing, but will he? They're pushing Rowan now. He's a big guy, been in the company for a while. Maybe they want to do something with Rowan. Maybe this is the way they make Eric Rowan into a legitimate threat, into a star, by beating Roman Reigns in a high-profile match. A lot of questions, right? A lot of questions came from that final segment of SmackDown. And I think it was excellently done. I think it was fantastic because when you're watching a wrestling show, the final segment should leave you with more questions than answers, questions that you want answered the following week on that show. It's like, okay, if I was binge watching this, I'd be like, yeah, I'm going to watch the next episode because I want to know what's going to happen next. So I, I will tune in on Tuesday night to find out what's happening here with Daniel Bryan. Well, you say Tuesday. It might happen on Monday, though, because we saw what happened with Raw. It was like the main event kind of coincided with the beginning of SmackDown. So it might just be on Raw. You mean it kind of carried over? Because I don't know if you've heard about it, but apparently there's going to be a draft. So the whole like split that kind of died, apparently we're going to get the split back again. So until that happens, I could see this carry over into Raw. The Daniel Bryan, Roman Reigns, Eric Rowan thing? I think it's good to keep it on SmackDown. I don't know if you need to move it over to Raw. I have noticed that they are keeping the brands more split in the past couple of weeks. I think the past couple of weeks has been more kind of uniform. You're here, you're here. Aside from Bailey, I can't really think of anyone else from SmackDown that was on Raw this week. No, I could just And think- aside from Sasha Banks, I don't think anyone from Raw was on SmackDown. They mentioned the Miz. I imagine the Miz will probably be on SmackDown because he's feuding with Nakamura. Right. The Miz is on Raw, right? Right. And Nakamura is the Intercontinental Champion over on SmackDown, but Miz wasn't actually on. Like it's not as confusing now in the past, I'd say, two weeks of Raw and SmackDown because they're sticking to one roster for each show. And when they do kind of have the crossover, it's maybe one or two people. It's not like six or seven and you kind of lose track of who's on what show. And no Shane McMahon again. Well, you don't really need Shane right now because there's no Kevin Owens as well, unfortunately. What's the deal? Apparently, he's helping his family because there was a... Hurricane. Yeah. Right, right. He lives in Florida now, so he's got to deal with hurricanes. That makes sense. Uh, so, it's it's better this way. I think it's way better that they have it split, but there are rumors of a draft coming up, so I don't know how that's going to play out. I don't know how that's going to affect the rosters. I don't think they know, Right. Well, hopefully this just kills the fact that you see all these Raw, SmackDown, Wild Card Rule, like whatever number amount of people can show up each week on each show. Hopefully that dies after this. Do you think this draft is going to take place before they move uh, SmackDown over to Friday nights? It's scheduled to. I think it's going to be the second episode of SmackDown when it moves over to Fox. Oh, they're going to do a draft on a Friday night SmackDown. Like, it's going right. to happen during the... Okay. Apparently, the October 11th edition of SmackDown. Wow. Yeah. So, we kind of know even the date. And it's going to carry over from SmackDown and that week's episode of Raw. So, the Monday and the Friday. Right. It's going to be draft week. Yeah. Yeah. That's going to be weird, too. That's coming up, right? SmackDown coming up on Friday night starting October 4th. It's... uh. Like three weeks away now. It'll change everything. It's going to change a lot in the WWE and uh, maybe even for Wrestling Uncensored. But as far as this Daniel Bryan thing, John, what is your feeling on this? Like, my feeling is this is a diabolical plan from Daniel Bryan. He took the thing from Rowan because they're going to attack Roman Reigns. 
This is all a clever ruse, and they're still in it together. But I have doubts, you know? So I'm not really sure what they're going to do. What do you think they're doing? Well, I think in the end of all of this, we're getting Daniel Bryan, Roman Reigns. How we get there is a huge question. I could see maybe Daniel Bryan have a little bit of a face run for a little bit, maybe for a month or two. I could see this go all the way to Survivor Series if they really wanted to because this seems to be their biggest angle, if not all WWE, at least SmackDown for sure. Yeah, it's one of the biggest stories going on in WWE. It's main eventing SmackDown pretty much every week. It's what Roman Reigns is doing. Right. So it's very important, right? They talk about it on Raw every week, too. They rarely talk about what happened on SmackDown and Raw, but they talk about this all the time. Yeah. Well, it's Roman Reigns. Exactly. It's his world, right? Like, the company still revolves around Roman Reigns, even if he's not champion, even if he's not on Raw, even. It's still kind of about him. You could still tell, like, oh, Roman's the top guy, right? Well, Clash of Champions is pretty much supposed to be all championship matches, but his match against Rowan is not a championship match, but because it's Roman Reigns, he's got to be on the pay-per-view. He was on the last one, so he needs to be on this one. Yeah, and it was kind of strange that he wasn't on the last one, you know? He's so often there all the time that when he's not there, it's like, whoa, where's Roman? And that is an interesting point. It is the only match on this card, Roman versus Rowan, that is not for a title. It's happened before Class Champions. Remember CM Punk versus Triple H? That was the main event of the pay-per-view, and it wasn't even a title match, but it was so important. Right. Also, the King of the Ring final, not technically a title match, even though it is kind of right. the King of the Ring title. Right? Yeah, something's on the line. So, what do you think? What do you think is going to happen here with Rowan and Daniel Bryan? I think Roman and Bryan down the road is probably the match they're going to make, but I'm still not sure how they're going to get there. Is Rowan with Daniel Bryan? Are they still together when this match does happen? Like, when Bryan goes down and faces Roman Reigns, is Rowan in his corner? I'll say yes, because I think it's better to have Daniel Bryan with backup. I think they like to limit Daniel Bryan wrestling as much as possible. He wanted that. He wanted a limited schedule, and he's pretty much getting that, but he's still being focused as one of the main guys in all of WWE. So this kind of works for both of them, I think. WWE still getting Daniel Bryan. Daniel Bryan doesn't have to wrestle as much. I mostly want to watch Daniel Bryan. Like, when I watch WWE, the the favorite segments are usually Daniel Bryan. You know? Kevin I, Owens for me, but okay. I like Kevin Owens too, but he hasn't been around for a little couple weeks, you know? And... Right. uh you know, Daniel Bryan's always been the guy that I've uh, enjoyed the most pretty much since he came into the WWE. Now, since he's coming in, into the WWE, Daniel Bryan's been my favorite guy. So seeing him around, the fact that he is wrestling today, you know, after what he's been through in the retirement and all that stuff, I just enjoy Daniel Bryan, and I'm happy that they're focusing on him. You know, I'm, I'm happy that there's at least something going on with Daniel Bryan. What that something is and how it's going to turn out, I'm not too sure, but I'm enjoying that it's about Daniel Bryan. Even though it's about Roman Reigns, it's also about Daniel Bryan, which is good. Well, I just wonder what was this all about from the beginning? Like, why take out Roman Reigns? Like, why did he really need to do that? I have no idea. They need to explain that without question. Well, I think eventually they will. Because he's the face of the company and he's the wrong face of the company, Daniel Bryan should be the face of the company and everybody knows it. Daniel Bryan is the real best wrestler in the world. Daniel Bryan is the guy that they should be focusing on. Daniel Bryan is better than Roman Reigns in every single way. Except for maybe, you know, being handsome or whatever, right? He's not as pretty. Remember those promos he'd cut on Randy Orton? Oh, Randy, you know, you're not as good as me in any way, but you're so pretty. Those were great promos from Daniel Bryan. And he could really say the same thing about Roman Reigns. Daniel Bryan is better than Roman Reigns in every single way, except he's not as big and he's not as pretty. Although, you know, to each their own. I think to Brie Bella, he's more pretty. So, and to me, he is too, all right? Although, I don't know. I, I think Roman's pretty good at bumping, though. Roman looks cool. He looks like, uh, you know, a superhero type guy, like Jason right. Momoa. He can take a good beating, Roman. Yeah, he's tough, 
But like as far as um entertainment value in the ring, like match wise, I prefer Daniel Bryan matches. He just wrestles a style that's more interesting to me. Roman is a lot of punch kick kinda, you know, slam here and there. Daniel Bryan is more technical, grappling. It's more fun to watch. I find it more interesting. And I like his promos better. I think there's more depth to the to the Daniel Bryan character than the Roman Reigns character. I'm mean, look Look at what Daniel Bryan has done. Look at the yes movement and then the the evil Daniel Bryan. Just the span of a year. I don't think you can you can give him enough credit for what he was able to do within the year that he came back. He became he was a huge babyface when he came back from retirement and then the next year at WrestleMania he's one of the top heels in the company, and everybody wants to see him lose the WWE Championship. I mean, the the range that he has, Roman's never shown that kind of range. Not to say he doesn't have it, but I doubt he has it. Well, that's the problem with being that Superman-like character that Roman Reigns is. There's really not much more they can do for you. Where Daniel Bryan, they've been a lot more creative with because they've given him more leeway in terms of being good, being evil. You've seen a lot more, like you said, range of Daniel Bryan than Roman Reigns because Roman Reigns has always been the same. But don't you believe that Daniel Bryan has more in him than Roman Reigns, for example? I think Roman has more because we haven't seen enough of Roman. We've seen a lot of Daniel Bryan. Where Roman Reigns, it's always been the same character pretty much. Right, but like, who are you more entertained by? Well, right now, Daniel Bryan, but I think there's still more potential in Roman Reigns that we haven't seen yet. Well, well, unfulfilled potential, untapped potential maybe, but like, you know, Daniel Bryan, he's shown you what he can do, and it's uh, pretty impressive, and I don't think Roman can hit those same peaks like Daniel Bryan can. Oh, he's going to be given the opportunity without question, so we're going to find out in a couple of years. I think he's been given the opportunity already, has he not? He's going to be given more opportunities. I don't understand you sitting here saying, oh, we haven't seen enough Roman Reigns. He hasn't been given enough opportunities to really show what he can do. Have you been watching the same show I have? He's been the top guy for the past five years. What are you talking about? Right, and how long did Cena get? Cena got like, what, 15 years? Yeah, and how did that go? You like that? Some people did. Did you? I thought for the first five. Did you? First five was okay. You didn't like I, it. I would have pulled the plug after five, but. I thought the last five were better than the first five. No, the first five was better because he wasn't that Marine crap. Like, that was terrible. No, I like uh, seasoned John Cena. I like smarter John Cena. I like post-rock John Cena. I, don't I think he's he was better of a res- uh, as a wrestler. In his later stages, he... You know, he learned and he improved. I think John Cena in the beginning when he was on top was just so inexperienced that he just wasn't that good. But the wrestling declined, though, in the later years. You could tell he was so much slower in the ring. In the last couple years, but there was a stretch there, you know? I think those Brock matches kind of ended Cena in a sense. Those might have been my favorite matches, though. Extreme Rules, like 2013 or whatever it was, 2012. There was that. He did a triple threat with Seth and Brock at the Rumble. He did another match with Brock at SummerSlam. Clash, was it like two years ago against Brock? Maybe three? Yeah, some of my favorite Cena matches were against Brock, for sure. But those matches, they take a lot out of you. And Daniel Bryan, going back to Daniel Bryan, he's had a lot of matches like that. It's taken a lot out of him now. Where Roman, I don't know if he's had that many matches where it's taken a lot out of him. He's had some pretty heavy Brock matches. Yeah, it's true. true. Roman's taken a beating, but he's very tough. He is, yeah. He's proven himself to be, I think if you you can give him a point over a guy like Daniel Bryan is that he's more durable, right? Daniel Bryan suffered some injuries. And Roman Reigns, for the most part, has been uh, injury-free relatively, right? He had a hernia at one point. He had leukemia, but that's not an injury, you know? Right. So he's very durable. Very durable, considering the amount of dates that he does. You know, this guy is constantly on the road, and he takes some pretty vicious beatings from some pretty big guys. Braun Strowman, you know? An inexperienced Braun Strowman. They gave him right to Roman Reigns. That had to be rough on Roman. 
Roman's taken some uh, some beatings. Roman is one of the toughest guys in the WWE, I'd say. Very tough. I think without question. Durable, you know? Samoans are tough, man, you know? They always talk about the Samoans being the toughest guys in the wrestling business, right? You hear all those stories about Haku and all these guys, although Haku was Tongan. Still very tough. Yeah. People just lump in Haku. They're like, oh, yeah, Haku. It's like, whoa, whoa he's Tongan. It's not Samoan. Well, it's like different. The Rock's only half, right? But they still lump in The Rock. You know? Yeah, The Rock. They throw him in. Uh, all right. Johnny North, we have a lot more to get to here in the WWE. I want to talk about the Nature Boy Ric Flair and the controversy that he's found himself in. A lot, actually. A lot of controversy. And Bailey. Bailey has turned heel. What is going on with Bailey? I think it is fantastic. And we are going to get to it when we come back. It is wrestling uncensored. Hey, and welcome back. It's Wrestling Uncensored. I am Dave Simon. He is Johnny North. Ringsidereport.net is the website. Go to the YouTube channel if you're not there already. Subscribe to the channel, like the video, leave a comment, and click that bell so you get notifications every time that we are on. When you got Ringside Report, the MMA show, Dave and Johnny Live, Wrestling Uncensored. We're going to be live right after Clash of Champions, right? Maybe a little watch-along post-show deal next Sunday. You ready for that, Big Johnny? I'm not ready for it, but we'll see what happens. You're not ready? Not at all. Oh, I, well, forgot, I forgot it was next Sunday. Get actually. ready, brother. Not this Sunday, but next Sunday, the 15th of September, Clash of Champions. And we'll be on the YouTube channel right after that to recap all the action. And will we see a new SmackDown Women's Champion. Last week, I was here on the show saying, look, this is in Charlotte, North Carolina. This is Charlotte Flair challenging for the belt, taking on Bailey. Bailey seems kind of, you know, tired as the champion. They're not doing much with her. It seems like easy pickings, Charlotte's going to be a new champion. And all of a sudden, Bailey goes bad. You say bad, but people were happy. I loved it. So Becky Lynch and Bailey are in a tag team match to end Monday Night Raw against Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross. Sasha Banks attacks Becky Lynch, starts hitting her with a steel chair. Bailey takes the chair away from Sasha, and you think, oh, Bailey is stopping Sasha from being bad. She's like, no, 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 you got to be good, Sasha. Don't do this stuff. But no. Bailey then takes the chair and nails Becky Lynch with the steel chair repeatedly, smiling, enjoying every minute of it, and celebrating with her tag team partner, Sasha Banks, the boss and hug connection on top of Monday Night Raw. And I loved it. I thought it was fantastic. And then Bailey does a promo on SmackDown. Great promo, I thought. Says she doesn't understand why anyone's surprised by her allegiance to Sasha Banks. She's like, Sasha's my best friend. I'm just trying to be the best champion I can be, and I want to teach your kids how to be loyal. This is what loyalty looks like. And, you know, the crowd's like, oh, whatever, Bailey. They don't really know how to react. And then Bailey says, I'm going to beat the most selfish wrestler in the WWE, Charlotte Flair, at Clash of Champions. Charlotte comes out. She's like, yeah, Bailey, I'm the queen, the queen of selfishness. It's like, all right, Charlotte, there, be selfish if you want to be. Charlotte says, you know, I'm not hiding. I'm not trying to trick you. What you see is what you get. I'm not going to hug you either. And then Sasha Banks shows up, and Charlotte decides, well, I think maybe I'm going to get attacked. I don't know. So I'm just going to attack Bailey. So Charlotte she makes the first move. She attacks Bailey, and then Sasha, who's Bailey's friend, makes sense. She comes in, helps Bailey, fights off Charlotte, and then Bailey grabs a chair and hits Charlotte with one of the weakest chair shots you will ever see, followed by another one of the weakest chair shots you will ever see. I don't know what's going on with Charlotte Flair. Maybe her back is hurt, but Sasha and Bailey seem to be going way easier on the chair shots with Charlotte than they were on Becky. Maybe they like Charlotte. Maybe Charlotte's hurt. I don't know. But those chair shots looked terrible. 
Sasha's were a bit better, but Bailey's were awful. That's not really the point. I'm just kind of, you know, did you notice that? Well, it looked like she almost hit her in the back of the head, but it was like, well, that's kind of light. I mean, that's not the end of the world. And then it's like, maybe she was worried she hit her in the back of the head, so that's why she was lighter with it, maybe? I don't know. Super light. Anyways, Bailey has now turned heel. Or has she? People are wondering, right? Like, who do you cheer for? Cheer for? Do you cheer for Charlotte? She's kind of been a heel for a while, but people like her. Mm-hmm. And, you know, with Becky Lynch... She's a baby face, and Sasha's been the heel, so I think Bailey has turned heel. People are saying, oh, it's not quite a full heel turn because she's still the same character, but, I mean, you're siding with Sasha. I think it's great. I think you have now elevated the other two members of the four horsewomen up to where Becky and Charlotte are. You have done in one move uh, what you've needed to do, and you've really raised up the entire women's division. You've given Becky and Charlotte both some formidable foes, some real opponents, and you've brought up Bailey and Sasha, who were the other two real trailblazers in NXT and the women's division. You've brought them up to the same level as Becky and Charlotte. Now, I'm sure it was nice for for Bailey and Sasha to watch Becky and Charlotte main event WrestleMania last year, but I'm sure there was a part of them and maybe a big part of them that kind of wished it was them instead. And Becky even talked about that in her excellent promo on Monday Night Raw this week, saying Sasha shouldn't be the one complaining about Becky getting all the opportunities. Back in NXT, Sasha was the centerpiece of the brand. She was. And Becky was just a sidekick. She was. She was, right? This is good stuff from Becky Lynch this week. Really good promo from Becky. It was it felt like the old Becky, you know? Becky calls Sasha a delusional little weirdo. <laughs> Becky says Bailey has been doing fine without Sasha and with all Sasha's talent it should be her instead of Becky Lynch, but you know, it's not and Sasha can't stand it. Very good stuff. Uh, Sasha even came out. Sasha comes out and says, I don't want to. I was supposed to be Becky, but, you know, I'm not. Yeah. That's tough. Yeah. And she says it was supposed to be her, but the only reason Becky got it and took it away from Sasha is because Nia Jax broke her face. Nice little thing to bring up. Yeah. Kind of saying, ah, you know, kind of happened to you accidentally. And it's great because, you know, they're. They're working, but they're telling the truth. And I think those are the best promos. And I heard Jericho talking about it this week, you know, when he's saying, you know, when I'm th- when I'm asking for the, the thank you, I'm working, but I'm telling the truth. And I thought that was a great way of putting it, and that's really how the best promos are. They're working. You know, it's a promo, but they're also telling some truth. And that is what makes a promo feel real. Like when Becky said, look, Sasha, you're just mad it's me. It was all you in NXT. I was just a sidekick. No one cared about Becky Lynch back then. It was all about Sasha. And now you're mad because I main evented WrestleMania. I'm the man. I'm the champ champ, you know? And there's a lot of truth there. And that's where the best promos come from. From a place of truth, from a real feeling, and there's real stuff that you can do now with Becky and Charlotte versus Bailey and Sasha. You can do a tag team match. You could do a fatal four-way to main event WrestleMania for all the belts. If I'm booking Mania right now, that's the main event. Becky, Charlotte, Bailey, Sasha, fatal four-way for all the belts. Even the tag team titles? Well, not the tag team titles, but, you know, the SmackDown and Raw titles. I think it's too much to do. Because you did it last year already for the Raw and SmackDown tag titles. I mean, SmackDown women titles. So? Like, it's it's too much, but... Why not? It, it's just overdoing it again, I think. I disagree. I would do it. I would go there. Um, I like it. I like this new direction. I like Bailey siding with Sasha. It makes a lot of sense. There's a lot of good story there between Bailey and Sasha and Becky and Charlotte. They have a long history together. This makes sense. And this makes Becky more interesting. I think Becky was losing a lot of steam. 
But this, all of a sudden, it's like, oh, okay. It's not just Sasha Banks. It's Sasha and Bailey now against Becky. And Becky's got to figure out, like, do I want to side with Charlotte or do I stay enemies with Charlotte, right? Because they're not friends. I mean, they are in real life, but not on TV. So how does that all work out? It's interesting. A lot of pieces at play. WWE made two creative moves this, this week that got me thinking and got me interested in the product. The Bailey thing and the Rowan and Daniel Bryan thing. Well, the Bailey thing, because you didn't really see that one coming. And I think the Roman thing, just because you saw progression finally in that story where it felt like it kind of got stale and you're just like, what the heck's going on here with this whole mystery guy? They killed that because they realized that was not a good idea. And they moved forward with it, which was good. And now you finally have interest in anything that Becky and Charlotte does because now they have opponents that you can believe in. Yeah, they have good opponents and they have a good story. It's not just good opponents thrown in there because, you know, like Natty was a good opponent. Yes and no. Natty was a good opponent for SummerSlam. It's hard to believe in Natty because she rarely wins anything. Right. But the way they built that match I thought was pretty good, but you didn't really believe in Natty. It helped it was in Canada. But going into Clash of Champions, anything could happen. I think Becky's going to lose the title. I thought it was going to be Bailey losing the title, but after this turn of events, I think we see Sasha and Bailey on top of their respective brands. I think Sasha is going to take the title from Becky Lynch, and I think Bailey, with help from Sasha, will retain against Charlotte Flair in Charlotte. And just imagine how much heat that is going to get when the Queen loses in the Queen City. Well, when you look at it, I think Becky is the longest reign champion, I think besides maybe Kofi Kingston, in WWE right now. So I held the championship Raw Women's Championship since WrestleMania. So her losing it, it just it kind of makes sense at this point because when is she finally going to lose? Sasha makes the most sense because there's really nobody else. That's true. They are two of the longest. They're the, the two longest reigning champions currently, right? And they've gone through almost everybody. So I think it makes sense. It's Sasha time. It's boss time, right? Yeah, it is. I know you joke about it, but it's true. Don't you love this, though? Isn't this great? It's good because I didn't really care about Bailey's stuff before. The Ember Moon stuff was, wasn't anything great, and it should have been good, but it wasn't. The story was terrible, but now I finally care about this, even though I still think Charlotte might win because it's still Charlotte in Charlotte. Yeah, but... But I have doubts. I have doubts now. Yeah, sure. Yeah, you have a lot of doubts now. Yeah. I was going into this match being like, oh, that's it for Bailey. I guess that's the end of Bailey's run. She's going to go back down the ladder, and they're going to bring somebody else for Charlotte to feud with after this, right? It was just like, well, this is over. Maybe Carmelo will come up, and, you know, they'll do that. Apparently, Carmelo is some sort of health scare or something she's going through. Yeah. That's why you don't see her with our truths. There's some problem with her or something. That's unfortunate. hope Carmelo's all right. Uh, but you know, anybody, Lacey Evans, it could have been somebody else going up there against Charlotte, but now it feels like, nah, Bailey's sticking around. We're not going to get rid of Bailey, which I like. And you've added a new wrinkle to the character of Bailey. Thing though, this might just be the start of everything too, right? You said maybe do a tag match. This could last for a couple pay-per-views. Like maybe Sasha and Bailey don't win, but maybe it just still goes on and you'll still see them wrestle each other for three pay-per-views. Yeah. I think that this is definitely something that they're going to keep going with I don't know how long and I don't know in what form right because we have Hell in a Cell coming up two weeks after Clash of Champions and then it's kind of a long wait before Survivor Series so I don't know and then in Survivor Series like what do they do well it shapes up pretty good right now Becky versus Bailey, right yeah I guess so if Becky doesn't drop the title or if Bailey doesn't. If Bailey doesn't too, right? Yeah, that's a good point. I kind of forgot about that Survivor Series stipulation. You do have to build up November for like a Raw versus SmackDown champion match, right? So the Raw and SmackDown champions have to make sense. And if Sasha and Bailey are the champions of their respective brands, having them wrestle at Survivor Series won't make a lot of sense. So... I guess either Charlotte or Becky has to be champion, and Bailey or Sasha has to be champion. A lot can happen between now and November, though. Yeah, but 
Yeah, I guess. I mean, they could change the title on TV or something, right? Charlotte's done it before. Yeah. They could do a title change on TV, and they do tend to do that kind of last minute before Survivor Series. They're like, oh, no, we're going to change the, the matches for Survivor Series here. Let's uh, Remember when Daniel Bryan went up against Brock Lesnar? He beat AJ Styles for the title like that week, and then he went on to face Brock Lesnar. And wasn't there a deal with Jinder Mahal too? Wasn't AJ beat Jinder? AJ beat, yeah, the year before. To face Brock. AJ beat Jinder Mahal like the week of to, so that he would go on and face Brock Lesnar at Survivor Series. They make those last-minute changes for Survivor Series because they're like, oh, wait. This doesn't make sense. Okay, let's change it now. So they could just do that for um, last-minute TV title change before that show in November. See, if Randy wins the WWE Championship at Clash, I could see him lose it right before Survivor Series just because it seems to be a tradition. The WWE Champion always loses right before Survivor Series. Maybe they'll do the Universal Switch this time. Who will be the Universal Champion at Survivor Series? The Fiend. Really? Why not? Well, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you didn't like to see that, huh? I mean, <laughs> sure, I guess if you want to do that. He's been WWE champion care. before. Yeah, make him universal champion now, right? Yeah. Bray Wyatt time. Okay. Sure. You don't want to see that, obviously. I don't really care. <laughs> I mean, if it's between Bray Wyatt, Seth Rollins, and Braun Strowman. I'm who? surprised you wouldn't go with Strowman. Wow. Who cares? I don't really care. I thought you'd be go with Strowman. Wow. Surprised. I kind of feel the same way towards all three guys at this point. I like Braun a bit because he's like more impressive to look at, but that's about it. Huh. Very surprising. I, I guess really, you didn't like the Firefly Funhouse this week. It was all right. I didn't hate the Firefly Funhouse. Bray Wyatt says uh, what the Fiend did to Finn Balor was, was super duper rude. That was his exact quote and says he's sorry. And then the Vince McMahon devil puppet shows up and yells at Bray and says, how dare you challenge Braun Strowman for hell in a cell? Or Braun Strowman or Seth Rollins, right? Right. And that Vince sounds a lot like my Vince. <laughs> it does a bit, you know? yeah. I feel like they're stealing my gimmick here. So Vince is about to fire Bray Wyatt. He's like, you're, you're. And then Bray's like, here's a bunch of money. And then Vince puppets these dollar signs. And then Bray shoves money in Vince puppet's face. And then Vince goes away. That's how it works. So uh, the thing was, you know, people are mad. I don't even get it. Can you explain that to me, man? I don't know. Well, I, I think this is just how Bray probably saw how people thought backstage, how it is, how... How probably Vince is mad and upset that this got leaked. So he's yelling at Bray because Bray tweeted that out, right? That he's going to challenge either Seth or uh, Braun Strowman. Yeah, so it's either Seth or Braun for Bray at Hell in a Cell. How come he gets a title shot? Why not? It's something new. It's different. So, yeah, and it's kind of weird that they, they talked about it on that Firefly Funhouse. I like it, though. Well, you mentioned this before, how like Hell in a Cell is like in two or three weeks. Like you don't have a lot of time to build it, so you might as well build it now. I like it. They have to. Yeah. Well, they have to do it. And it's like I said last week on the show, Hell in a Cell is two weeks after Clash of Champions. Hell in a Cell, uh, Clash of Champions is on the 15th of September. Hell in a Cell is on the 6th of October. Literally two weeks of television to build one pay-per-view. You're probably going to get a bunch of rematches, so to have a fresh match, you might as well start the build now, so it makes more sense. Yeah, Hell in a Cell is basically going to be a Clash of Champions rerun, maybe with a couple Cell matches involved, right? Hopefully The Fiend against whoever the Universal Champion is. More than likely Seth Rollins. Hopefully The Fiend. You're excited for this. This is what you want. Yeah, I'd rather see it be different. Yeah. Will, uh, you think Seth Rollins is going to retain? It won't be Braun Strowman. I prefer to see Braun. Yeah, but it's never Braun, so I, I would never bet on Braun. Braun and Seth had a contract signing this week with Michael Cole as the moderator. AJ Styles and the OC showed up, and they're like, why is Braun getting a universal title shot? He just asked for the title, so he gets a title shot. They made fun of it, which was pretty good. It's very good. Good promo from AJ Styles saying he should be getting the U.S. title. Uh, or he should be getting the uh, universal title shot because he's the U.S champion right right and he's like why are bobby Roode and dolph ziggler getting the tag team title shots and then aj rips up the universal title contract and then braun and seth attack the oc and take them out right 
Well, and then I mean, it's a Seth and Braun tag team match against the OC that they win. Right. Um, AJ Styles jumps in the ring after the match. Braun takes everybody out, accidentally bumps into Seth Rollins. Bobby Roode and Dolph Ziggler show up, and they continue the beatdown, and they all stand tall together. And no contract Whatever. is signed. No contract is signed. So because no contract was signed, Stone Cold Steve Austin will be the moderator for the contract signing next week to ensure that nothing happens like what happened this week on Raw. Now, all that would be fine had they not already announced that Stone Cold Steve Austin was going to be on Raw next week to be the moderator for a contract signing. Like, that was known before Raw happened. So, like, they spoiled their, they spoiled themselves. Right, but I think it's just, because it's at MSG and they're trying to sell as many tickets as possible. So. Yeah, but just say Stone Cold's going to be there. Like, didn't they say Stone Cold's going to be there to moderate a contract signing between Seth Rollins and Braun Strowman? Right. And then you have a contract signing between Seth Rollins and Braun Strowman on Raw. You're like, well, this isn't going to work. We're, what happened to Stone Cold? I thought that was next week. Well, things change every week, right? You know, one week to the next, something different. So uh, It's not great. It's not great. Dolph Ziegler and Bobby Roode had a match. They beat Zack Ryder and Kurt Hawkins on Raw. You know? Why did uh, AJ Styles and the OC attack Cedric Alexander? Because uh, AJ's going to wrestle Cedric at Clash, I think. Is that it? Yeah. 100%. But is that the reason? or like was Because that match isn't official. That match hasn't been made. It's going to happen. Why? AJ needs an opponent. And Cedric, we need a reason why he didn't win King of the Ring, and it's because of the OC. Okay. It's going to happen. Okay. I thought it was weird that they just attacked him. I didn't really see a reason why. They, they, that's the reason. All right. Lacey Evans beat Natalia. I don't know why that was on Raw. I don't know what the point of that was. Because Lacey, regardless that she's not in the title picture, she's still someone you should recognize as formable in the women's division. Okay. Uh, Baron Corbin beat Cedric Alexander to advance in the King of the Ring to the semifinals. Corbin hitting the end of days. Cedric Alexander, of course, selling the beatdown that he took earlier in the night. So Baron Corbin advances. And in the other King of the Ring match on Raw, Ricochet and Samoa Joe ended in a double pinfall. They both fall off the top rope. They both are lying down, and they drape an arm over each other. And one, two, three, ref ends the match. And he's like, uh, I don't know what this is. I got to go backstage for an official ruling. So I, like, I like it. Go backstage and talk to somebody. I guess Vince McMahon. They're like, who? Who's the ref going to talk to? It's like, well, Vince. I don't know. Triple, Triple H, H. Who knows? <laughs> so then Joe attacks Ricochet and they brawl a little bit. And then later on, uh, Corey Graves is with the referee and he's like, "What's the decision?" And the ref is like, "They've both advanced and it will be a triple threat match with Baron Corbin next week." So Ricochet, Joe, and Baron Corbin in a semifinal triple threat King of the Ring match coming up on Monday night. First time ever this has happened in the King of the Ring tournament. Yeah, it's kind of cool. Usually uh, you get a bye. Right. If no one wins, you get a bye. Exactly. This has happened before, yeah, where yeah, they would Car Corbin would just advance to the finals. Yeah, usually, but not this way. So Corbin, Ricochet, Joe, who's going to the finals? I got Ricochet. I had him from the start. Well, I was completely thrown off again this week on every single match. So, <laughs> well, I told you uh, Baron was going to beat Cedric. Okay, but you saw his Ricochet would beat Joe. That didn't really happen. Well, okay, but that was hard to predict, right? I mean, the... and SmackDown was completely wrong too. SmackDown was weird. I liked how it went, but it was, uh, yeah, I was wrong on both my SmackDown predictions, which I've had a perfect King of the Ring bracket pretty much uh, up until this point. But surprises over on SmackDown where you had Elias beating Ali. Shocking. That was a big shocker. I didn't see it coming. Ali Ali looked like he was getting a big push. He loses to Elias, and then Chad Gable lo or beats Andrade. We thought Andrade would win, and we thought Ali would win, but no, Gable and Elias win, and it'll be Gable versus Elias in the semifinal coming up on Tuesday night. It's huge. I don't know what to think here. I think they're going to go with Chad Gable. I think it's going to be Gable and maybe Corbin in the finals. Like I know I said Ricochet, but I don't know, man. I feel like they're doing something with Chad Gable. Unless they're going to do Elias Ricochet in the finals. I'm not really sure. It's uh, 
It's interesting. They definitely went a different way than I thought. I thought it would be Andrade Ricochet in the finals. Nice, solid match. Good wrestling. One heel, one baby face. It made a lot of sense. Two guys that you could see winning the King of the Ring. Either one. But now, all bets are off. Well, they had Samoa Joe on SmackDown, and he kind of taunted Chad Gable. So I feel they might go that direction. That's true. Joe was there on SmackDown for no apparent reason other than to taunt Chad Gable for being short, right? And I think this is the whole big story, like, throughout the whole thing. Everyone's doubting Chad Gable. Yeah. But he still wins, wins, and makes it to the finals. I could see Chad Gable winning this. Maybe it will be Chad Gable and Joe. That's a solid point, though, about Joe just being there on SmackDown. What was he on SmackDown for? Well, I have no idea. <laughs> like, it made no sense, really, besides that. To like, help very, build that match. Yeah, very few people from Raw were on SmackDown. All of a sudden, Samoa Joe's on SmackDown talking smack to Chad Gable in like a 90-second promo backstage. You're like, what is this? Why? Why? It's probably going to be Joe and Gable in the finals, right? I think Gable might win it all. That would be good. That's what I want. That's ideal. Chad Gable is a great wrestler, and they should be doing way more with him than they are. They give him the king of the ring, that'd be perfect. Well, it's something, but you know, what are you going to do with him afterwards? That was the problem with all the other kings in the past. That was the problem with Sheamus, Barrett, and even a bit with Regal. Like, he didn't do much with him afterwards. Granted, Regal, he failed the wellness test. That was a huge problem with him, but the other guys... You, they dropped the ball completely. You have to do something after the fact. Winning the tournament is a big thing, but they need to have a follow-up. I think Chad Gable's very entertaining. He can do it. They I just have so. to give it to him, right? They have to give something to Chad Gable. Um, let's see. Elsewhere here on um, SmackDown, we had Aleister Black beating Shelton Benjamin, and we have a new 24-7 champion. Drake Maverick lost the title to Bo Dallas and then regained it from Bo Dallas, and then lost it to R-Truth. Once again, R-Truth is the 24-7 champion. What is it, 14-time champ now? Something. It's weird. You know what else was weird? Shinsuke Nakamura's match with a jobber on SmackDown that Sami Zayn talked through the entire time. Sami Zayn is like Shinsuke's hype man, manager, whatever, and he was like, taunting the jobber throughout the match isn't this leo rush's old gimmick where he used to do that with bobby lashley yep i mean it's fine but you know it's nothing new what are they doing with Sami Zayn? what's going on is he hurt i think it's just to give him something because he's good at talking but i guess they aren't fan of him like winning matches so nakamura can win matches because he's champion but sammy's also very good at wrestling yeah, but look, he barely ever won matches. And they made a th big thing about that is that he couldn't win matches. So that's bad when they're putting you in like a job or storyline. You might as well just be a manager then. It's too bad. It is too bad, but they're making the most of it because at least he can talk pretty good. Yeah, but I I don't know. I hope he re he, he will wrestle again, right? I, I expect that. You got to remember too, like he's had how many like shoulder surgeries? Quite a few. So maybe it's better he doesn't wrestle as much. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe it's Rick. Maybe it's better. Ric Flair doesn't do as many interviews as he does. What you're maybe Ric Flair? Flair? Maybe Ric Flair should stop talking. No, it just doesn't seem like Becky you know, also like taunted him a bit. Did she? Well, she said like I could take on all the flares. So Ric Flair is mad that the WWE is using the phrase "the man." He feels that that is his phrase. He should be allowed to be paid every time that Becky Lynch or whatever sells a t-shirt that says the man. Because to be the man, you got to beat the man. And I think that is a phrase that he has trademarked as well. I believe so, For yes. merchandise and stuff. So right. he does have some copyright. You know, he's got some... He's got a he's got a claim here, and he's fighting the WWE on it. And he did an interview with TMZ this week that was pretty wild. He said... Uh, you know, he's been trying to figure it out with the WWE's lawyers and get paid for them using the man because I am the man. You know, he, he did use that phrase. He made it popular in pro wrestling, and he's trying to get paid for it, and the WWE's not playing ball. And Flair said he even called Hunter Triple H about it and said, look, I'm going to have to, you know, file some sort of suit because you guys aren't uh, doing – doing what I need here, and Triple H, I guess, didn't do anything to help Flair because Flair says, you know, I know they like me and all, but I guess they don't respect me as much as they used to. 
And he says even his own daughter, Charlotte, is mad that he's doing this and trying to attack her friend Becky Lynch or whatever. And Flair says it's not about Becky Lynch. It's just about him and what he he needs and the people he loves. He wants to make sure that they're taken care of with money when he's gone. So, I don't know. I think it's uh, something that Flair maybe has a right to do but should probably keep quiet about. I wouldn't do interviews if I were Ric Flair about it because it just just looks bad. It doesn't look great. You know, it looks it just seems sad that like Flair's now upsetting his daughter and stuff. It's just come on, man. And you know, did Flair invent the term the man? I don't know. But I think he's got a claim because I mean Becky Lynch is saying it because right. of Charlotte Flair and Charlotte Flair is saying it because of Rick Flair. Exactly, yeah. So, in a way, Flair's got a point. And if he wants to sue, I don't know how these things work. I don't know how a judge would rule on this. I'm not a lawyer, but I feel like Flair has, you know, grounds for a lawsuit if he wants to pursue that. And it seems like he does. So, getting into a court battle with WWE is never easy, although CM Punk may be able to give you some advice on that, how it works, how to win. Right? He won. It takes a while, though. Could take a while. Could be really rough. And, uh, you know, don't expect to see Flair on TV anytime soon. Hopefully AEW. Yeah, maybe. Maybe this will push Flair to AEW. But this is just, uh, I don't know. It's a bit sad. It's hey, a bit sad it's that it's business, going on. business, man. He's got to protect his family. I, no, I get that. I get it. I get it. It's a bit sad that maybe WWE isn't playing ball a bit more with Flair. I just feel sad mostly that this is upsetting Charlotte and is maybe causing a rift in their relationship. Feel bad about that. It's business. You know, you just got to realize that. It's not personal. Sure. So, uh, that's what's going on with the Nature Boy Ric Flair and the WWE. You think he's got a case? You think the WWE should be paying Ric Flair for every t-shirt that says the man on it? I, I believe so, yes. I think so, too. I think they owe Flair something. He came up with that. It does come from Flair. To be the man, you got to beat the man. Becky Lynch was talking about it. She started calling herself the man when she was feuding with Charlotte. Where do you think that comes from? Now, did Rick steal a lot of other things from everyone else? Yes, of course he did. Yeah, <laughs> well, that's kind of the other thing. It's like, yeah, well, Flair, you stole most of your gimmick from, you know, several people. But that's what wrestling is, too, right? Like, you take something from one person, you take something from somebody else, and you make it your own. He took a lot from Dusty Rhodes. He took a lot from the Nature Boy, Buddy Rogers. He took a lot from, uh, you know, the, the Jerry Lee Lewis did the woo, and he took it, right. took it yeah. from there. You know, Flair has openly admitted to stealing things from other people. Maybe that'll come back to bite him in his court case. Who knows? Didn't you, Ric Flair, actually take the phrase to be the man, you got to beat the man by from Rick Steiner, who said it backstage one day? You know, like, who knows? Who knows? The thing is he trademarked it, though. That's the big thing. Yes, that phrase, to be the man, you got to beat the man, he does own that. But the man itself, I don't know if he can trademark. That's tough. That's tougher because that's just two words. The man. The man walked down the street. You know what I mean? Do you have to pay Ric Flair every time you say that? It's hard to, you know, just the man. You, you, the man. Is that different? The man. Is that D-A-M-A-N? Is that different from T-H-E-M-A-N? You know, does Flair own the man if he owns the man? It's tough, man. I don't know how these things work, but like I think he's definitely got a point with the Becky Lynch thing and WWE, but as far as the general phrase, the man, I don't know. It's kind of tough to own that type of thing. I remember DDP owned like the DDP logo thing, like the hand signal. Like, well, Vince people... McMahon wanted to own You're Fired, right? Did he? Wow. Yeah. That's, that's a little too much. I think you wanted to stop Donald Trump from taking that. At some point, like Trump wanted to copyright it because he did you fired uh -huh. and Vince has you're fired. And like there was something going on there. I'm not sure of the details. We can get to it. I'm sure it's out there. But uh, yeah, there was a you're fired kind of copyright thing. And it's hard to copyright you're fired because, you know, people get fired. The way it's presented to usually it's not you're fired when you get fired <laughs> from your job. But hopefully not. <laughs> hey, hopefully not for you. You never know. Uh, all right. Big Johnny. When is the next time people can see you in the ring? 
It's going to be September 21st. I'll be in Hawkesbury, Ontario, wrestling the Blood Hunter. Bell time is 7.30 p.m. Nice. More info. Follow him on Twitter at North Genesis. Follow him on Instagram at Genesis Johnny North. You could follow me on all the things at Dave Simon MMA. Subscribe to the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash ringsidereport.net. Go to ringsidereport.net, the online home of Ringside Report, the Ringside Report Network, and you can check out all the shows. You can watch all the videos, Wrestling Uncensored, Ringside Report, MMA, What's Phantom in Japan, all sorts of stuff going on on ringsidereport.net. If you're listening to this show on the radio, you can watch it over at ringsidereport.net. Dot net. I want to thank everybody for helping us out on the radio side, and a big thanks to you for listening and watching. For Johnny North, I am Dave Simon, and this has been Wrestling Uncensored. Yeah. 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 Yeah.